Hey, moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the Wawa Water Boy, duh! Hoo wee! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here. Oops, wrong one. Open for business here. And let's wake up those football gods. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Saturday. And see, for me, game day starts really a couple of days ago. We got a lot of work to do to get the man cave ready for company to be here tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. We'll be starting out at about 1245, live streaming, 1 o'clock games, 4 o'clock games, and maybe, just maybe, we'll even do the Sunday night football. It will be a marathon here, and I hopefully you guys will join us. We had a ball last night. Over 1,200 people watching at one time. And 75 on Cowboy Joe Boo. So definitely join in. We had a lot of fun and stuff. We'll have our usual E2 Blue, DMV, uh, Them Boys Kicks, and David Wiley here, and the Big Sub. Hopefully seeing the Dallas Cowboys get their first victory of the season. Although that's a tough task. Because since 2010, the Dallas Cowboys with season openers, if they haven't been playing the New York Giants, they haven't been getting the wins. They are, I believe, seven, six and one, six and one against the New York Giants, including, including Joe Boo's very first game. The very first game after the, excuse me, the Giants' last Super Bowl win, which was supposed to be the coronation of that Super Bowl ring, Joe Boo went to New York City. He wasn't scared. He was there in the stands. As the Dallas Cowboys beat the New York Giants ass. And the Cowboys, let's say, since that time, they have owned the New York stinking Giants. Be that as it may, we are happy to be here. And after last night's game, it was sloppy. I'm going to say, honestly, first of all, having to get Paramount TV although I'm not mad about Paramount TV at the moment, okay? I'm going to say a couple of things have happened that end up being a blessing in disguise. I had direct TV for a number of years with a freaking satellite dish on my roof, which I hated and my wife still hates to this day, but I'm too scared to get up there and cut that sucker off because that's literally three stories up. Be that as it may, getting YouTube TV actually saves some money because I'm able to use it here as well as at the Red Brick House. So I'm double timing. I'm double teaming with that. And I love all the program and the ease of it. In fact, I'm going through my, my man cave now and I'm pulling out HDMI cables that were literally running all over the place. I probably got about $20 worth of copper that I can take to the scrapyard from all the HDMI cables. Seriously, seriously. So I'm happy about that. So I got Paramount TV, which is now $13.99 a month, getting the premium so you don't get the ads, or at least not as many, to watch that game last night. Now, the good news is I'm seeing, um, what is the name of the series? With Samuel L. Jackson. It's got Don Cheadle in it. It's got uh, Kevin Hart. You know, it's like uh, Terrence Howard, the genius and stuff in there. Um, basically, uh uh, damn, fight something or other. Can't wait to actually watch that series. So that may not be a bad thing. And Michael will be able to watch all his wrestling, which he used to watch, of course, with our buddy, rest his soul, Rashid. Um, so we got that. Now, you've got players that have to fly 10 hours to get to Brazil to play in a stock, soccer stadium that, mind you, they did a whole, you know, from soccer field to putting up field goal posts. They, you know, they did a whole extreme makeover. But that field was so wet and soggy that you saw players slipping left and right. That the play on the field was horrendous. It was terrible. And I'm going to get to Dak Prescott's situation here in just a second. Jordan Love 
then hurts his knee, hurts his knee because you're on the road. You don't have the MRI machines in the stadium where they can check this thing out. He's got to fly on an airplane for 10 hours to get back to Green Bay. And I'm not sure that what the NFL ends up getting out of these international games is worth it. I, I just don't know, or at least for the players. Watching it here at home, seeing the, the players sliding, the field conditions. If they're going to do this, they've got to do a better job. They've got to get NFL crews there to get these fields and stuff ready because you're talking about multi-million dollar players that are literally risking their careers to play a game internationally. And then the sooner you get looked at, the sooner you can start treatment, you literally have to wait and go back home. So that means he's not really getting looked at till today. Ten hours from last night, by the time they go to the locker room, that's what, one o'clock they're going to the airport? Ten-hour flight? They're just probably getting to Green Bay. So, yeah, I, I kind of, the NFL gets a bonus game because it's on Friday. I get it. It's all about spreading it. But there's a point where fans start having backlash and saying, you know what, this is just too much. It's, you know, it's just too much. All right, so we have some more news this morning on the Dak Prescott contract situation along with other contract situations and things. And I'm going to say the Eagles will. I'm going to talk about them more. But the Eagles, they won the game. They won the game. But they got some problems. Jalen Hurts is still a turnover machine. A fumble, two interceptions, and it should have been two more. Now, again, it's real early. Kellen Moore is getting play, praised for his play design. But if they have those turnovers like they did, yeah, okay, all right. And you can see the Eagles are good at stopping the run, but their secondary can get picked apart. And they don't have much of a pass rush. So congratulations, you got the win and all that. Now let's get to Dak Prescott in his contract. With 12 seconds left in the game, the international travel now adding layers to when we'll know the extent of this injury, James. We'll, we'll be getting to Dak Prescott, yeah. of course. Yeah, Save the best for last. Green Bay before sure. they can get full clarity on this, go through an MRI, some mm -hmm. imaging to see what they're dealing with with both the knee and the ankle, because both sure. appear to be a little compromised there. So with the ankle, they'll elevate his leg in the plane ride, on the long plane ride, try to keep the swelling down and hope for the best here. Look, there's concern, yeah. certainly, but the Packers are hoping for the best. That they knee, did not have you really see that thing just kind of jiggle. Coming out of the game, they're just trying to get back to the stage, sure. figure all this out. God, that high-low, man, it looks so dangerous. You see that knee kind of move. You see the knee move in a direction it's not supposed to move. Um, his status obviously in question. So, too, is Jamar Chase's for a completely different reason. As yeah. week one kicks mm. off tomorrow for the rest of the league, uh, how is he approaching tomorrow. the season opener? Tomorrow. Well, it's going to get interesting because he's calling himself a game-time decision. Yeah. He also wanted his contract extension done by yesterday. Okay. It did not get done. But I've continued to hear from sources in the building that they feel like it's pretty close, really over the last week or so, that they've been in the ballpark, they're in the red zone on this deal. Can okay. they get it across the goal line before kickoff? Certainly that would make it easier and give Jamar Chase some solace to get back on the field with a new deal. But he's also willing to play on it. So he's left some mystery here. It really is up to him. The Bengals are actively trying to put him under a contract extension that pairs him with Joe Burrow sure. for the next four to five years. And it will come in somewhere in that hierarchy of the C.D. Lamb, Justin Jefferson range mm -hmm. of money. They just got to get it done. So even if he doesn't get the deal, it looks like he'll probably play. Practice went well from all I've heard, but okay. it's, it's certainly up to him at this point. Got to think Joe Burrow's like, hey, Ooh. man. <laughs> We need you, brother. Come on. Uh, keeping it in the division, Russell Wilson dealing with that calf injury. What is his status for tomorrow? Well, gee, today is big because later this morning the Steelers will have like a walkthrough practice. I'm told Russell Wilson is expected to be involved in some capacity in that practice. If he can move around well and show some stability on that calf injury, then he does at least have a chance. He did just enough in yesterday's practice for the Steelers to think, okay, well, we can at least try, give him another day, see how he responds. But it does feel like right now, with Justin Fields getting a majority of the reps the last two days, that he's well positioned to play. They're leaving the door open for us. We'll see what happens over the next 12 hours. Dak Prescott. The sources have told me that the Cowboys are trying to get a contract extension done with him before the bell, before kickoff tomorrow, 425 p.m. Wow. in Cleveland. So, so there one you source go. of the team said that they are, quote, working away at this. They're huddling up, trying to see what they can make work. Dak Prescott's folks are doing the same. There is a gap here, certainly, that they would have to bridge because it has to be a considerable contract. He's got a ton of leverage. He's not afraid of free agency in March and all the money he could make there, but he does want to be a Cowboy. So 
Those are considerations being kicked around. It's got a chance. It, it's not a slam dunk, so certainly. So you're telling me try. there's a that chance. That is insane that so many big-name players are going up to the 11th hour on the goal line for these ma- All right, so, and um, to get a little clarification, new clarif- deals, Jeremy. Clarification here. Um, they're hammering away at the deal, and they're hoping to get the long term extension done. Of course, they're they're a, a, still a ways away, but they are trying to at this last hour to get it done. And see, here's the thing: if you are Dak Prescott, if you're Dak Prescott, you know you see Jordan Love get injured the first game. You you, you want to have some security. You know, I know fans will say, "Well, shoot, if he gets injured, screw him, let him walk." But honestly. You don't want to lose lose future earnings. I mean, let's let's be honest here. Football is a business, okay? It is a business. You are there. You are an independent contractor who is trying to do as well as you can. I mean, that's what we'd all would, would be doing. So for Dak, you may want to say after that injury last night, there may be a little more sense of urgency to get this thing locked down because you're talking about the last 12 seconds of the game. I'm looking at Jordan Love's knee, and it reminds me of when you've seen people's with their Achilles and you see literally the, the, the quiver, which is just basically it ripping. When you see Jordan Love's knee to that little jolt, that little jolt did not look good. So, I, I'm, again, I am not an expert, but we have, looking up on here, finding out that it is actually, they're still in the air. They're still in the air for about another two hours. So they won't be in until after 12 uh, Eastern time. So you, there's, you're not going to find out anything anytime soon. And the longer this goes, of course, the more speculation there'll be. So we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, with Jordan Love. We, on the other hand, we've got a game to play. And, and here's two sides of the fence. Don't, don't, you can't infer too much by what happens the first month of the season. Okay. Now, if Jordan Love, of course, is hurt and gone for the season, you can infer a lot that the Packers will be in trouble. You can infer that if that's the case. But typically, a bad game early does not mean that your season is over. And on the flip side, a good game early doesn't mean that you're headed to the Super Bowl. You really don't know what you have now, especially in today's NFL, because the teams don't play in preseason. Basically, the first three, four games are literally preseason and getting yourself into a rhythm. These players have not tackled anybody since last season. So you're going to be rusty. You haven't gotten the hits in. You're not getting into the regular regimen and stuff until it's been a couple of games. And pace in point, the Green Bay Packers last year, the first half of the season, were awful. They were losing some to some of the dreads of the NFL. They got it together midseason and went on a run. The Eagles were winning games early, mind you, beating the Commanders twice, one in overtime, but allowing them to score 31 in two games and literally going down to the finish is not winning good games. But they were winning. They were winning. They were leading the NFC in wins, and then they played poorly going down the stretch. It is a long season, and a lot of things can happen. So don't get too excited. And again, the Cowboys, if they're not playing the New York Giants as a season opener, they lose. They lose. They just do over the last 15 years. So there's that. So we'll see what we see going against Cleveland. But tomorrow would be a good measuring stick. We're going against a team that likes to run the football. You know, a lot's made up, of course, about how great Cleveland's defense is. But the Cowboys have a pretty good offense, a really good offense, the highest scoring offense in the NFL. We'll see what we get from Zeke and see what we get from uh, Dalvin Cook. At the moment, you got to say, Saquon Barkley does Saquon Barkley things, which is start out the season looking great. He was definitely the best player on the field in my mind last night, um, but he has a tendency to tail off, and we'll see if that holds true throughout the season. Jalen Hurts, turnover machine is going to be my word for the day. But I'm going to go to, because I have not heard this, we have something new now every Friday. It's 
is it me or does it seem like we're seeing more of Mike McCarthy than we usually do? Or maybe I've just missed it, or maybe I'm just looking for it more. But he is on 105 The Fan now every Friday. I'm going to be looking for this on Sean and RJ's show, and I have not heard what Mike McCarthy had to say, but I want to listen in and finish this off this morning with a little bit of it and see if we can actually get some insight from Mike McCarthy. Back to the show. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Good morning. It's good to be back. Mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, joining us. Did you stay up late last night for that game to, uh, to end? Uh, I, I um, didn't see the game, actually. Just, uh, you know, week one's always a little bit, you know, a little more work involved. Uh, so we're, we were pretty busy here on the offensive side of the ball last night. Coach, does, like, so much more work get put into the first game opponent than the rest of the year when you have, a, obviously, a lot shorter prep time? Like, do you do twice or three times the workload on the opening opponent? Uh, definitely. I mean, I just think it's you know the nature of the beast. You, you know, you look at it the whole summer once you got the, you know, once you got the schedule set. But uh, you know, to be honest with you, the schedule is a little bit, you know, of a juggernaut. Uh, you know, the bye week with just the way it's set up, you really don't get the work done that you, you, you would like to get uh, uh, done because you know you're still building your roster and you know and then that thing sometimes ride you know runs all the way into Wednesday and then Thursday's your last day because it's mandatory Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you really just have a normal week in the first game in my experience has always been the toughest because you've been working on it the most and there's there's so many things you feel good about and you got to really really stay on top of your volume you know and check yourself so um i i spend more time in week one just making sure you know you hit everything um you know the first road game how we travel you got you know we had had some a number of you know, player acquisitions right down here at the end and just getting people acclimated. So you just have a, you know, a lot of extra conversations that are time consuming. Mm -hmm. When it comes to kind of studying the In Browns, other words, we've been working our ass off. One or any week one opponent, you know, during the season, you'll look at tape from, you know, across the year. Heading into a week one, are you looking at a bunch of, you know, at the end of last year's tape? And, and how do you factor in stuff like a guy like Jerry Judy, who's new to this team? Are you watching stuff he did in Denver? How does that approach work? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's just like anything. You, you know, you have your schematical approach, and then you have your, you know, the, pl the player matchup approach. Uh, you have historical components that you look at, the history of the coordinators. Um, obviously, playing in Cleveland. You know, we, we haven't played in Cleveland uh, in my time here. So you just, you know, you're, you're going through all those items and just make sure you're detailing it. Coach, kind of wanted to go over your theme for the season. Look, 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 look. Audience rooted. Saw the T-shirts and the uh, the gear yesterday. Can you just kind of uh, go over once again why you chose that theme for this season? Yeah, definitely. I, I think, you know, just, it, it, you know, the origin is uh, year five. Um, you know, the story of the Chinese bamboo tree. You know, um, you know, you plant it and you basically water it for, for four years. And, um, you know, and you see nothing <laughs> really above ground. Bamboo tree. Uh, but the reality of it, it's it's what's growing beneath it. And uh, I like that. If you know the the story of it, uh, in year five, within a, you know within a five week period, you know it goes from zero to eighty to ninety feet. So, and, and the reality of it is, you know it's it's not that it grew all you know to eighty ninety feet in five weeks. You know it, it's it's really the root system that's been being that's been built over the five year period. You steal one of your old kids' textbooks for that? How the, how the heck did you find that a little nugget out? Um, no, actually, you know, a friend of mine just told me the story, back, frankly, back in February. And, you know, just my personal experience uh, in the last opportunity I had, you know, won a Super Bowl in year five. So that kind of generated the conversation. Hmm. And then, you know, and we also, every year, you know, we have a theme, but we have, you know, sub-themes to it, too. And you know, we've done a lot of work with O2X, uh, Human uh, Performance Group out of Boston and they, you know, I thought they did a really good job with our football team and they had a slogan of, you know, improving 1% every day. So we, we also accompany that as part of, part of the theme. And the, and the third component is, you know, how are you going to do it? And that's, you know, be where your feet are and stay in the present. So I uh, thought it was a good message this year. Mike McCarthy, head coach of the Cowboys, get yourself mm -hmm. the opener on the DNM leasing hotline. Uh, something that Jerry has repeated is what he thinks pressure does with people. Uh, that he likes to see how they perform under it. And uh, I personally believe, yeah, some people can thrive under it, and some people, you know, maybe a little bit irritated by all the pressure on them. In your experience, Coach, with a ton of pressure on guys, do you feel like it, it creates diamonds? 
can it have an adverse negative effect when people are worrying about contracts and distractions and all the other things that we usually talk about in an NFL offseason or going through this year with so much on Great the line? Question. How do you view pressure? Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's a big question, uh, one I'm not really going to get into right now. I, th- I think just the, the nature of this business alone um, it brings a lot of pressure to every individual in it um, because you just just because of you know what you have to do to to perform and, and succeed in this business. So, um, and that's that that is a lot of pressure. And I think for people that are in this business over, over the long term, um, you know, it's it's something that's you know you have to be able to endure and and, and, and thrive in. So. Uh, you know that that's the big picture, but you know everybody's situation is different. There's a personal component to this, yeah. and mm-hmm. everybody handles pressure differently. Uh, so I think you know the professional part of it is you know I mean you get up every day and you go full full bore ahead, and that and, and you have to do it in this league, or you, your people are going to run right past you. So, uh, but there there's a personal component to this for everybody. Coach, we've been trying to figure out Deshaun Watson uh, in his time in Cleveland. Does, does he resemble in what you've seen? Does he resemble the quarterback we saw in Houston? Or what's your what's your take on what's going on with him? Yeah, definitely. I think you just gotta you know you gotta stick to the video. I mean, you watch the games that he played. You know, in, in you know the ten games and you know five and one in the six games prior to that. You know, his record you know before the injury and everything. So, uh, you know, he makes them different for sure. Uh, you know, this is a Offense, they run the ball very well, um, and they have all the movements and keeps. Uh, big screen team, so I mean they, they put a lot of stress, you know, on on, on your C gap, on, on your force components, and things like that. So you got you got to be really in tune with that. You got to tackle well, and then you know he's a playmaker. He's a dynamic uh, player with the ball in his hands. So yeah, I, I mean that's that's the guy we're preparing for. Is is the Guyton um, you know, Miles Garrett type matchup? Is that the one that you think might be a really make or break this game? You know, with his first start and and, and his uh, you know first first game in the NFL. Well, I just think like anything, uh, you know, it's we we way we view them defensively, and and, and obviously Miles is a great player, so incredible he's player. Been playing this level for quite some time, so regardless of who's playing left tackle, I mean that's a that's definitely a focus of us of how we want to attack their defense and and they did a really good job of moving them around you know he wants to be on the left side he'll play someone on the right side and you know and they use him as the spinner and off the ball and so forth but it's uh you know it's it's definitely the the approach of you know where is he every play you know so uh-huh. uh, when we break the huddle we, we definitely gotta we gotta know where he's lining lining up Coach, you said on Thursday uh, you're not necessarily comfortable starting so many rookies against Cleveland, but you're confident. Is it important for those rookies, though, to be comfortable heading into this game? You think? Well, I did not say I wasn't comfortable. I just said I would not use the word comfortable. I, 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 I don't think that's – I mean, I, don't, I mean, who the hell is comfortable going into a football game? I mean, I, I, you know, didn't want to be critical of the gentleman's question because that's just not my nature. But uh, – <laughs> Uh, no, I just I'm, I'm confident in our players. Um, I'm confident in what these young guys have done. They, you know, they they've earned this opportunity, and, and most importantly, you know, just you know, visiting with the leadership council last night, the, the veterans are are excited about our young guys. So I, I, that speaks volumes to, you know, what these young men have done since they've been here. Coach was uh, was was CD behind at all when he finally got into camp? Do you expect any kind of pitch count week one? Well. I mean, I, I would say he's behind. You know, he's just, you know, he's just kind of getting back into it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's 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 always the the little things that every player goes through um, when there's there's time away from the group. So uh, we'll continue to work through it. But he's he's hit every mark every day. So that's you know that's that's what you go by. We got two more days of practice, and um, really want to see how he is today. Yesterday was a big day. We you know we were outside and you know just blew it out. Frankly, I mean, mm-hmm. we do comparables of. You know, yesterday's practice compared to the last three practices uh, this time of year, and, and, and the workload capacity was off off the charts. So, I mean, the way these guys come in here to, today is, is going to be important, and he's definitely one of those guys. You guys are very. We're going to go ahead and end it right there. It's definitely going to be important because the Cowboys will be starting more rookies than they have since I think 1970. So, is this. You know, it, what you have to actually realize is, is how much has changed in the five years. I like what Mike McCarthy says about, um, says that this is like you planting a, a bamboo tree 
first four years you don't see much and he's looking at this as saying okay it's mature now you know we've been building something we got kellen moore out the building where now i've you know had a year with dak prescott as my quarterback and working and stuff growing on there i've had brandon cooks and jalen tolbert in the system for a while i got my playmaker right there we have grown a jake ferguson and now we are planting or we're fertilizing the offensive line basically i'm adding lib on this but fertilizing the offensive line you know with the the new guys and stuff to help this thing grow even more so we'll see how all of this goes together you know we got questions on how good will zeke and dalvin cook be um i'm gonna say that so far at least when you looked at the impact of derrick henry for baltimore It still was the Lamar Jackson show. You can look and say, without Saquon Barkley yesterday, the Eagles don't win that game. Saquon was key in there to help open up things for them. We'll see how it goes throughout the totality of the season um, and so on. And we'll have fun tomorrow because football season is here. So as always, good people, you know, we got a lot of work to do to get ready for the game, but I appreciate you guys being here and being part of the show and uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm Mark Holmes and we's out of here. Oh, I don't have that on here anymore, do I? I don't have it on here. So let's go out with uh, this, an oldie but goodie. How about that? Oh!